Hi, I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr, and you're watching Videos by Andy. Here with me is Sean Phillips of Unique USA. We're at CES at one of the busiest booths at the show. And in a moment, we're going to talk to him, and we're going to find out where he's been the last 12 months. And that starts now, right here on Videos by Andy. Okay, let's turn the clock back just 12 months ago. We're at CES, or let's say you're at CES. You have a nice food, but you basically have one cop to here, a Q500, not even a 4K model. Now let's fast forward 12 months. You now have a full line of copters. What in the heck have you been doing the last 12 months? Well, first of all, Andy, it's great to talk to you again. And you know, one of the things about Unique is we actually have a pretty rich history in electric aviation. Uh, for 15 years, we're an ODM manufacturer, helping a lot of RC and hobby companies as they built out their flying platforms. From the very get-go, we focused on this idea we wanted to make electric aircraft that were ready to fly right out of the box, easy to fly once you got them out of the box, and safe to fly. And so, even though a year ago you only saw one product, behind the scenes we've been working in this industry for 15 years including launching as you may remember six years ago one of the world's first manned electric aircraft that basically uses the same brushless motor technology albeit at a much bigger scale that the drones you see behind us look into your question about what happened in this last year is we've always had a plan to have products that met all the different consumer needs whether it's an entry-level consumer, what we call a prosumer, somebody that may be using their drone to shoot wedding photography or maybe do roof inspections, all the way up to truly commercial drones. Like right back there, you see a big tornado flying. So whether it's the Typhoon line or the Tornado line, we've been thinking about what are the right segments to be in, the right products to meet the needs, but always with one kind of lodestone behind it all, which is we want to make drones that are so easy to fly that you can do the thing you really want to with them, whether you're taking photographs of your family at the beach or you're doing infrared focused analysis of a wheat crop in Illinois. We want to be able to make it easy for you to use your drone. Do you think looking at your current lineup, and really, I understand new products will be coming out right. periodically, but do you think you have the majority of your platforms covered at this stage? Like the unique uh, that the Typhoon more is your entry level. Right. Then you have the Typhoon H as a step right. up. Then the Tornado platform right. as commercial ahead. Right. Or are there more bases to cover? Uh, I think there are more bases to cover, Andy. And while we can't divulge too much about it, I, I kind of think about it as at some point to really enter into the mass consumer market, you need to have a product that is going to uh, be probably around the $500 price point be so easy to use, Andy, that you don't even think about the fact that you're flying. you are just got a camera that helps you take Z-axis pictures as well as XY-axis pictures. So that's definitely something. And then on the other end, you know, right here behind us we have the Typhoon H. You mentioned it already. We launched the basic model, which is a very cool product with some obstacle avoidance already. But then I think you probably heard about the Intel announcement made by their CEO where their sense and avoid technology, what's called Intel RealSense, will be integrated. That'll come out in the first half of this year, and that product will really provide you with an ability to start to realize one of the holy grails of being able to fly drones safely, and that is to avoid sense obstacles and avoid them or track them or do whatever you need to do. Now, I realize that the Intel announcement, a lot of us have been waiting to see what that meant because it, it was only six or eight months ago where Wall Street was made aware that Intel brought over a suitcase full of money and said, we like what Unique's right. doing. We want to take this. Is there more things coming? Is this the first step? Is what they're creating going to be exclusive to Unique or things are going to market to other products? No, I, I, you know, I think the, the way we think about it is we're a launch partner for Intel. And we're obviously got an investment for them back in early August, which was great and, and is part of it. But we're there. We they see us as the right partner to test out new technology in the drone space. And I think they think of drones as kind of a corner case in an Internet of Things. It's one of the most complicated nodes or endpoints on an Internet of Things as we develop that ecosystem. So they want to be able to work with a partner that really understands drones to maximize the value in that. That said, you know it's. 
obvious, Intel has great technology, and I expect to see it in all the drones around us over time. Now, you know, one thing I have to say, I've been coming to electronics shows yeah. since the 80s. Yeah. I mean, yeah. since the handheld calculator, yeah. really the late 70s, yeah. when I worked with Texas Instruments and yeah. Panasonic and beyond. Yeah. But what Intel did mm -hmm. is what's called a coup in this industry. At a major keynote presentation, they are showing your new introduction. They got right. to introduce it. So instead of just going to the copter enthusiast or the copter dealer, it went to the world. Yeah. Well, how did you feel about that? I was so excited. You know, I was in that keynote audience. Obviously, I knew what was coming, but still, it was just cool to be a part of a vision of the overall growth of the industry. You know, they talked about this idea of sports and health and general creativity, and, and to be in that that place, it was great. It was an exciting feeling. And that was the demo, and the reality will be, you know, by the end of the first half of this year, we will have a product that will actually be out in the channel, and anyone can use. And I'm looking forward to that day even more than the keynote. I only have one more question. I, know this, I always have to throw in one tough question. Yeah. But you're a CEO of a major company, you can take it. The world is talking about China right now. The economy, it is all over the place. Right. How is that, if any, how is that going to affect the production of new technology? How is it going to affect Unique? Is it going to affect the pricing? Are we going to see with the fluctuation, the pricing going up? Yeah, well, you know, it's a great question, and I'm not a macroeconomist, so I'm not going to answer it from that perspective, but I can tell you how we think about it on, on one level. Uh, our biggest markets for sales are U.S. and Europe and are likely to remain that way. We manufacture in China, so when the RMB loses value, it actually makes our costs a little lower. So from a micro perspective at our company, we don't see it as having a big impact. Obviously, you know, uh, I can't help, my wife's an economist, so you know, from her macro view of things, it would be that uh, obviously if China catches a cold, it ain't good for the rest of the world. So uh, it's not a positive development, but for us personally in the short term, we don't see it as a major impact. Okay. I'm gonna just, one last thing, because I know this man's busy, gracious gave me a few minutes, a moment ago. You, you talked about that you know you would like to see a $500 price point. Can I operate on the assumption, and I know I don't like the word assumption, that instead of, that your $500 entry point is not going to be a version of the tornado that brings it down, that eventually it's going to be a fresh product? Um, I would just say at some level it's going to have some of the same core competencies that allow us to provide ready to fly out of the box, easy to fly, safe to fly products. But in terms of the form factor and others, you're in for an exciting surprise, perhaps down the road. I'll tell you what, I mean, this guy's been great to me. He's let me come to their offices in California. Really, you should be very proud how we started off this segment of what you've done in 12 months. You go around the show floor. You're not seeing too many companies done what you've done. Sean. Thank you, Andy. Thank great you so much you. for your time. For videosbyandy.com, I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Pearl, and I'll see you online. And maybe one day I'm going to get to fly one of these H models. What very do you soon. Very soon.